If you're watching this right now, I'm sure you're asking yourself questions. And one of the most striking questions that you have is, how do I know if I'm going to make it to heaven? Or maybe you're asking, what do I need to do to make it to heaven? Or some people may be asking, I'm not so sure. How do I get prepared for this? Before we go any further, let me ask you this question. If you were going to die right here, are you 100% sure that you're going to wake up in heaven? Or are you 100% sure that you're going to wake up in hell? Especially when you're young, people think, I have so much time. I'm still young. But guess what? Don't you see on TV or all over the news, newborns even are dying. So that let us know they were never too young to die. Sooner or later, it's going to be our time. Many people are scared to talk about death. Many people don't like the reality of death. Some choose to ignore it, pretend like it never happened. I don't think, well, it is what it is. We're all going to die eventually. I don't care if there's an afterlife. I'll just wait and see what happens. And to me, that's quite shocking to realize. How can you not be prepared for what's coming next. I've lived over a hundred years old. Um, however old you are. And you're boastful about it. And you think that that's enough. But when you look in the Bible. Eternity does not have any measure. Ooh. There is no ending. It's like from today. Until forever and ever and ever. So that tells us. That the decision that we make. On where we're going to spend that forever time. It could be 500 plus. And plus and plus. It's not just one hour, it's forever. So that makes you realize how important it is to make that decision here because the choice and decision that you make today determines where you're going to spend that eternity. Are you ready to? First, I would like to thank you for stopping by. My name is Joyce Ikofo. I grew up in a Christian family. I've known all about the tradition, going to church, but until I had to personally make an encounter with God. That's when things changed for me. That's when I got a deeper understanding of the things of God because it was no longer by custom or by duty, but it was more intimate and more personal. And I'm sure by watching this video, you're gonna be blessed and you're gonna get the answer that you're looking for. You are at the right place at the right time to make one of the most important decisions of your life. I say that because this decision will impact not only your today or your tomorrow, but eventually your future. And your future goes beyond this word. It goes all the way until eternity. So keep watching until the end. And eternity means where are you going to spend that time after this word ends? Because the Bible tells us that this life doesn't end here. There is life after death. So when you die and you wake up in the other world, where are you going to wake up? Are you going to wake up in the presence of your Lord, Jesus Christ? Or are you going to wake up in hell, in a burning place, a terminating place? The Bible shows us that there is no such thing as reincarnation. There is no purgatory. So it's either you go to hell or you go to heaven. There is no in between. Maybe you're wondering, okay, okay, I get it now. What do I need to do to go to heaven? Let's dive deeper so you can get a better understanding. Do I need to be a good person? Do I need to go to church? Do I need to pray uh, seven times a day? Do I need to give donations? What exactly is it? I'm here to tell you that it's not through your works that you're going to be saved to go to heaven. Jesus Christ came on earth. He died at the cross for your salvation because he thought you were worth it. Not because you deserved it, not because you did anything, not because you were looking for him, but God the Father who created you, knowing that you needed a savior, he sent his son to come and die on earth. So quickly, I'll give you five principles that will break it down for you. First thing, recognizing your need for a savior. In the Bible, we see that the creator of the universe, God, the one and only God, made everything that exists in the book of genesis we see how he created human he created adam and eve in the garden living their best life they had everything they needed and by being there 
God gave them one instruction. Do not touch the fruits from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you read in Genesis chapter 3, we see how they disobeyed God. They decided to do exactly what God told them not to. Why? Because the snake, which is Satan, tricked them into thinking, well, God wasn't really telling the truth. If you actually eat this fruit, you're going to have so much knowledge. You're going to be greater than God. And they were tempted to try to see, hmm, is this really true? Well, let's try. What's going to happen if we actually try? And that is exactly how sin entered into the world. And that is the first sin we see in the Bible. And that is the fall of humankind. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So acknowledging your imperfection, acknowledging your sinful nature because of Adam, which was the first human being, we understand that everyone needed a savior. So throughout the Bible, we see how God had a plan to reconcile himself with the people that he created until God decided, I'm going to send my one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come on earth so he can pay the price. So he can leave in this flesh of humans and he can go to hell. He can get the key that's going to open the door for salvation for the rest of humanity. I love that part. The second key that I'm going to give you is understanding the consequences of sin. Sin is any form of disobedience to God. Any form of rebellion. When you think you're going to live your life the way you want. I'm just going to do my own thing. Yeah, right. Guess what? You were created by God. And him being a creator, he was the potter, right? And you are the clay. So he's shaping you into this piece of hard work, right? And you thinking that, yeah, I'm just going to leave my life and do my own thing. Doesn't work. That's rebellion towards your creator because we are all supposed to be accountable to the one and only God who created us. The third point is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Embracing Jesus as the exclusive path to God. Jesus is not just a prophet. He was not just any other man. Jesus was the Son of God who became flesh for your salvation, for the salvation of humanity. So accepting Jesus Christ as the mediator between us and God gives you that salvation. There's only salvation through one name, and thy name is Jesus. The fourth point, repenting and turning away from sin. Repentance is not just asking for forgiveness. Did you know that? Repentance involves a genuine sorrow for sins and a commitment to turn away from them. It's a change of hearts and minds that leads to a transformed life. It's a radical decision. When I look in the Bible and when I look at the people around me, even testimonies of people all over the world, I have never seen anybody that encountered the one and true God and was ever the same. My secret is receiving the gift of salvation by living a transformed life. Understanding that salvation is a free gift. It's not earned. It's not something you did. It's not that you deserved it. The Bible says if you believe in your hearts and you confess through your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he came and died on earth to pay for our salvation, guess what? You have salvation. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that nobody can boast about it. No matter your past, Jesus loves you. No matter the things that you've done, Jesus loves you. As the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Their sins are gone. So you need to allow the Holy Spirit to transform you from within day after day. And you will start producing fruits that reflect the character of a child of God. The people around you will definitely notice and recognize that there is a change What happened to this person that we once knew? Allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you every day, you really start developing fruits like loving people genuinely, forgiveness even when people hurt you. You're quick to forgive. You're quick to love. You're quick to gentleness. What I'm trying to say is this. This walk is not always easy, but it is so much worth it because we know the end result is spending our eternity with God. And so 
no matter the sicknesses, no matter the problems that you may encounter throughout your path until Jesus Christ returns or before you die, you still have to keep that faith in your heart and believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. This will give you the keys to salvation. By listening to this, I pray and hope that you have understood the basics of what is going to help you make it to heaven or what's the pathway to heaven. And my prayer today is that you're going to give your life to Christ. And if you're ready, please, you can close your eyes, you can open your arms in signs of surrender to your God and just make this prayer after me. You can repeat after me, dear Jesus Christ, I give you my all. I surrender my heart, my mind, my soul, my being in your hands. And I want you to have full control. I acknowledge that you came and died on the cross for my sake. You paid a price. I can have freedom. Lord, I repent of my sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Clean me from all rebellion. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior from today until the last breath that I will ever take, until you return. Accept me as your child. I give you full control of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <sighs> if you made this prayer, I want to reassure you right now, the Bible says in heaven there is a great celebration because there is a new child who is coming back to the Father. So I want to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. This is such an important decision and I am so proud of you and I'm sure God is even proud of you. So I want you to type in the comments, type right now, I am saved. By typing that message, I will be able to read it and I will be able to keep you in my prayers and even other people can see and acknowledge the beauty of salvation and how God can still redeem lives. So go ahead and do it. And in my comment section and in my bio, you can see how to get in contact with me. On this specific channel, every week I have different content coming up that will be helping you in your walk with the Lord. As you walk every day, you're going to have teachings that's going to help you to grow in understanding of the Word of God. But I would also like to encourage you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a serious church. And I mean leading you to a local church if possible okay i say that because you cannot just go anywhere because we know the bible says there are many false teachers out there there are many different beliefs that have went away from god so you need to be careful on who you listen to and what you listen to the most important books that you can ever have is the bible that's the key okay I love you guys and I'm so glad that you're with us today and for anybody watching make sure to comment make sure to follow me on my different platforms I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in my next video and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys one day in heaven God bless you all